Today, we're gonna to be diving into our state of the industry report. Now, if you're not familiar with the state of the industry report, basically it is a gigantic document that I put together every single year to explore the trends, things that are happening in the online business space, in the M&A space, and really give you guys some opportunities here, whether you're a buyer or seller, on what you can do and really just what is happening. So in 2020, we sold 298 online businesses, making us the largest M&A broker when it comes to deal quantity of anyone else in the industry. Also, that is a 10% increase from what we did in the previous year in 2019. The craziest thing about it all though, is that it represents 66% more sales volume that we did the previous year to a tune of over $81 million worth of deals transacted on our marketplace. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down some of the biggest things I see uh, between the main three business models of content, e-commerce, and all the other business models we sell kind of grouped together to give you some insight into really what is happening in the marketplace right now and how you can take advantage of it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Gregory Elfrink. I am the Director of Marketing at Empire Flippers, where we help people just like you buy and sell online businesses literally every single day of the week. And this whole video slash possible a few videos, this could be a whole series about just that, people buying and selling online businesses. There is not a lot of resources out there when it comes to getting some real data on what is happening. And if you've been in the industry for a while, you've probably seen other people put together reports and usually those reports, to, in order for them to make it, they have to go and scrape the internet of all the broker's listings, everyone's listings, and compile it that way because they don't have enough deal flow to put together their own report. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it doesn't give you the full insight into what is happening because one of the biggest factors that is missing through almost every single industry report or you know thing that's trying to be an industry report is the actual sales price. And, people who are just scraping data from other brokers, they can't really reveal the sales price, not because they don't want to, but because they don't know it. They don't have access to that information. So we actually do have access to that information, and that is why we do this gigantic monstrous report called the State of the Industry Report, because it can actually reveal not just actual uh, uh, sales prices or multiples, but also even days on market, the kinds of earnouts that are happening, what's the upfront payments you can expect as a seller or as a buyer, what kind of earnout can you expect to make to a seller and actually get the deal? So let's dive into some of the stats here of what happened during 2020. Okay, so we break down this report into three main parent categories. So there is content sites. This would be something like your affiliate sites, Amazon associate sites, all that good stuff. And then there's e-commerce, and that would be drop shipping, a traditional DTC website, a Amazon FBA business, all that good stuff would be in the e-commerce category. And finally, we have the other category that is a slew of bunch of different business models like SaaS, KDB, and really esoteric ones like Merch by Amazon. So how did we fare in terms of the actual market breakdown of what kind of businesses were sold on our marketplace? Well, here is a nice pie chart I will put up here for you. That is the actual percentages. But basically, content sites we were represented 16% of our marketplace that we sold last year. And the other category, that smorgasbord of different business models, represent just a little bit over 5% of our marketplace. The craziest thing of 2020 was e-commerce, which represented 77% of all of our transacted volume. So when I said earlier, $81 million worth of sales last year, that comes primarily from e-commerce because e-commerce has just been exploding in 2020. So right now, I'm going to say it right at the top of this video, more or less. If you are an entrepreneur looking to make a profitable exit, you cannot ask for a better time than right now. And I'm going to go into the reasons why this happened, but valuations have increased dramatically in 2020, and they'll continue to stay very, very high as far as we are predicting so far with our uh, you know, crystal ball or whatever, uh, they will stay high throughout 2021, in our opinion. Now, there might be a little correction where valuations do come down, 
or maybe the, it'll, they'll even go up a little bit. We're not expecting a huge jump in valuations in 2021. We think it's going to be a pretty stable year as far as asset prices go. But that stable asset price represents a gigantic increase from 2019. So I want to go into what we were calling the TTM data or the trailing 12 month data. So most brokers, if you don't know what TTM is, all that means is a business valuation based off of a 12 month window. This is something I talk about all the time on this channel and other places, which 12 months is the gold standard when it comes to valuing your business. It is the standard that most buyers are familiar with and most buyers will want to see. Now that doesn't mean there isn't other pricing windows. So on our marketplace, usually when we release this industry report data, in the past, we've just done the average multiple without really taking into account the window of time. So in the average multiple in previous reports, you'd see uh, maybe a, a 26X, but that 26X is coming from maybe a few businesses with a three month pricing window, an eight month pricing window, and most of them 12 months. So we have consolidated all that data, at least for this video. If you download the report, which the link will be in uh, down below in the description, we represent or we present both types of multiples, our normal multiple and the TTM. But for this video, we're just going to be mainly talking about TTM because if you're looking at other brokers, the vast majority of brokers just use TTM for pretty much everything. So that is the, one of the better apples to apples comparisons here. So let's dive into it. What were the valuation breakdown for all businesses across all three of those parent categories I just talked about on our marketplace in 2020? So the TTM multiple is 34.x. Now keep in mind, that is a monthly multiple, not an annual EBITDA. We always use monthly at Empire Flippers. But that represents, that 34x represents a 13% increase from 2019 numbers, which is crazy and amazing if you are a seller. Because like I said earlier, if you are thinking about selling, now is the best time I've ever seen it. We're calling it the season of the seller. It, we, I, I've been with EF for five years almost. By the time this video comes out, it might be uh, past my anniversary actually. And I have never seen such a good time for an entrepreneur to sell their profitable asset. So that's the TTM multiple that we saw in 2020. But what else did we see in 2020? So we saw average sales price. $269,000 was the average deal size on our uh, marketplace in 2020. And that represented a 73% increase, meaning Assets are not only becoming uh, more valuable, they're becoming bigger and they're commanding much higher sales prices on our marketplace. And the really good news out to, well, everything in this video is basically good news if you're a seller, to be honest. Uh, buyers, don't worry, there are opportunities there for you too. But one of the really cool things is our average days on market went down pretty significantly. Our average days on market to sell a business would, uh, was only 43 days, which is 16% lower than what we did in 2019. So if you're looking to sell your business, like right now, not only is this the best time I've ever seen to sell your business, it is also the quickest time for you to sell your business. And there is more money than ever when it comes to actually finding a buyer that has capital. For instance, on our marketplace alone, we have over a billion dollars of buyers who have verified their liquidity to acquire businesses from us. That's huge. There is a gigantic buyer pool out there right now that are hungry for these digital assets are churning decent, solid profits. And these numbers, by the way, like I said, these are in aggregate. So I will probably be doing a couple monetization videos as we explore this data more, primarily on, on Amazon FBA, because again, Amazon FBA is a huge market. That 77% e-commerce stat I said earlier, the vast majority of that's Amazon FBA. Like, we sold a few dropshipping stores last year uh, and we sold some pretty decent sized e-commerce stores, DTC uh, uh, stores last year as well. And like, I think the traditional e-commerce stores was around nine or six, yeah, six million dollars that we sold in e-commerce store, which is just completely dwarfed by Amazon FBA. So I will be making a dedicated video series on the state of the Amazon FBA multiples and valuations down the road. But <laughs> the, these overall aggregate multiples they're huge. I mean, a 13% increase on average on business models across the board is pretty gigantic and really good news if you're a seller. So why are valuations getting so big? Well, let's talk about this because that's the elephant in the room, right? Some buyers might be thinking like, well, I'm going to buy when the prices go down, right? They're timing the market a little bit, which 
I do not recommend, and just like on the seller side, I don't recommend you timing the market to try to sell your business. Usually these, these, these things don't move very quickly, usually. They usually are very slow and the trends are obvious, all that stuff, except for last year, which let's get into it. How did this happen? How did valuations rise so dramatically and buyers are still buying them, you know? Like what, what is going on here? What, what is happening? So let's dive into it. So we can't talk about what happened in 2020 to M&A valuations until we talk about the pandemic. <laughs> the, the, the disease I shall not be named that made the world a lot worse for the most part. <laughs> so that pandemic that is still going on right now, uh, hopefully we're starting to see a, a, a major recovery this year is, is my hope at least. Uh, basically what that did for the online business valuation space is it drove consumers, people like you and me, to shopping online even more. Now, the adoption of e-commerce and shopping online has been something that's been long documented in the industry. People more and more are turning online to buy their goods and services versus going to say uh, down Main Street and going to a true brick and mortar offline store to buy what they need. But what's interesting about the pandemic is it forced basically entire nations to shop online. Like there was often no other choice you had if you wanted to go and buy something, you had to shop online. So there is even a, a the older demographic. So people like my uh, parents, for example, they're in the older demographic and they never shop online. They never have in a million years. They're like, why, I, I don't wanna learn this new thing. I'm too busy with other stuff. You know, I, they just put it off forever. But now they are online shoppers and for, my, for example, my mom, she hasn't been to a grocery store in months and months. She just orders it all now from an app. She's like, this is amazing. I don't ever go to the grocery store again, right? So now you get this older demographic that most likely never was going to adapt, at least not in mass to shopping online. Now they are. And now that they see, oh, wow, this is super convenient, it's very unlikely they're ever going to go back to the way they used to do things. And with all the grocery apps that have come out to deliver groceries, I think we're witnessing an, a giant acceleration of this trend of shopping online. I don't think it's going to go away. Once the pandemic is completely gone and everything is back to normal for real, there will probably be no retail stores, at least not as uh, 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 retail stores making as much money as they used to because more and more of the population realizes shopping online is way more convenient, way easier, and they're not going to go back. So this trend alone explains a large portion of this valuation, uh, uh, this valuation topic that we're talking about, because all these consumers now are shopping online and they can't go do other stuff. They can't go spend their money on vacations and like go traveling, all this stuff. So most of their stuff is just being spent on consuming goods, goods and services that e-commerce store owners and other entrepreneurs, or digital entrepreneurs are providing. So I have friends that at the start of the pandemic, Amazon Associates cut their commission, which is a terrible thing to happen during a global crisis, as you might imagine. Even with that commission cut though, they were making way more money than they've ever made before because of this consumer trend. Their websites were getting way more traffic and our traffic was way more hungry to buy things. So even with the reduced commission that Amazon offered their associates, a lot of my friends in the SEO space had their best years ever. Now the same is, can be true or the same can be said for my e-commerce friends as well. They're seeing more and more people shopping online, thus more people coming to their stores and buying more goods. And what happens when a store sells a lot more goods? They make more money and that of course drives up valuation, at least in business size, right? And we already talked about that earlier, how business size alone has grown dramatically on the Empire Flippers marketplace. So this is part of it. And then in Q1 of 2020, when everything was going nuts still, and no one was quite sure what was happening and what, what, you know, what's our response going to look like? Everything was just a whirlwind of chaos, right? This is a bad time for investors to invest. If you looked at our uh, quarterly report, which we publish uh, every quarter on the blog to be you know, transparent and all that good stuff, you'll see that Q1 of 2020 was actually one of the worst quarters, if not the worst quarter that Empire Flippers has ever had. But if you look at 2020, you realize it was the best year Empire Flippers has ever had. So why is this? Why was Q1 so bad and the rest of the quarters so good? Well, the reason why is exactly what I just said, that unpredictability, that chaotic, Feels. You see, B 
big investors like P private equity firms, brand aggregators, people that raise hundreds of millions, tens of millions, or just a few million, all of these people love investing and they can invest and acquire a business during challenging times. So like, you know, they, they have to set the rules a little bit differently, of course, but they can still invest during a challenging time. And then of course they can invest in a good time. The place where they usually do not invest is during an unpredictable time where it's unsure where things are gonna happen. So Q1 saw most of the big PE buyers, big family offices and brand aggregators that shop our marketplace hold off. They didn't want to deploy any capital during this very unpredictable time because it was unsure what was happening. Now, fast forward that to Q2. They have an entire quarter's worth of capital that they didn't deploy for the most part. So what do they do? Well, the world is calmer now. It's worse, right? But it's calmer. And now they know, okay, there's new rules. I understand what, what, what's happening in the economy. I understand you know, what's going on and the responses is trying to roll out. Cool, let's invest. <laughs> so now they're deploying capital again. So Q2 saw this roar of capital come onto our marketplace with all these brand aggregators and other affluent investors and acquirers now again buying businesses. And this led to some very interesting things. So all of these big brand aggregators are raising millions and millions of dollars that are in the news, press releases. If, you, if you're an Amazon FBA, you probably absolutely knew, know what I'm talking about. There are so many funds out there now uh, versus in 2019, there was like just a handful. Now there's so many, I can't keep track of their names and they all shop with us. They're all on our marketplace looking for businesses. But what this did, it created all this hype and buzz about the high yield that online businesses can produce. And what else happened in 2020? Well, you have a bunch of real estate investors who or were making good yield, but now their tenants aren't paying rent. There's uh, moratoriums on rent. There's forbearance that they have to take. And this is quite a stressful time for some pretty highly affluent investors. And they're wondering, well, okay, well, what can I do? I'm not sure if I want to buy houses during this uh, pandemic with you know what I've been seeing and who knows what's going to happen. So a lot of those investors heard about these funds that are creating all this buzz over here. Like, wait a second, online businesses, digital assets, what's that? And then they start coming to our marketplace and they start buying businesses. So basically it is this a cycle. I, I was about to say virtuous cycle, but to be honest, the pandemic has not been virtuous in any way, right? But this cycle of accelerating consumer trends, leading to huger uh, net profit for the businesses, PE firms roaring in on Q2 to gobble up all of these e-commerce stores, the PE firms and big money creating all this hype and buzz. Now that hype and buzz is starting to get into other spaces of investing where those investors might not even knew there was such a thing as M&A in the online business world. They probably didn't know what, what, what you mean when you say online business, right? So now all of these new investors are starting to come in as well. And all of these buyers are competing with each other, which drives up the price as well. If you have a, a, a seven figure FBA business, for example, all the funds that have raised millions and millions of dollars to buy your business, if you use us at least, or another broker like us, all those funds are shopping on our marketplace and they're all competing with you. And I have seen personally, many of our buyers and these high, uh, you know, high liquidity funds with a lot of capital to deploy, they'll say like, Hey, if fund a offers a deal on this business, let us know or on any business, let us know because we will beat it and fund B will come in and beat that price. Now fund A has to make another offer that's even higher than fund B's price to buy the business. So this is all the, the things that are happening that are, have accelerated valuations in 2020 and continuing into 2021. Now, again, I don't think valuations are going to go much higher than they are right now they might go a little bit higher or they might correct and go a little bit down, but they will certainly not fall back down to the 2019 price levels and even early 2020 prices that we were seeing. So basically online businesses are finally catching up in terms of their valuations with offline businesses, that traditional brick and mortar store. Now years, years ago when I first started with EF and less so in 2019, but it was still low, online businesses tended to be less valuable in terms of their actual valuation price, their sales price, than say your local hair salon or you know, any other number of retail businesses that you would see in any town. And they just weren't the same valuations. Online businesses, much, much higher cash flow usually than those businesses, but tend to not get the same kind of sales multiple as those kinds of businesses. That is starting to change in a dramatic way. 
And so that is another reason why I don't think valuations are going to go down, at least not in any kind of dramatic fashion, unless there is another black swan event, which why not? <laughs> I guess it, I guess that could happen, right? Uh, but I, I think valuations for online businesses are now going to be relatively peer to peer and running in parallel with those brick and mortar businesses and brick and mortar businesses, to be honest, they might get a lower valuation now because they have a lot of disadvantages going for them versus what an online business has. And as I said earlier, Main Street investors, Main Street buyers, Main Street entrepreneurs, they are now coming into our space, seeking that yield that an online business or a digital asset can provide. So this is all the confluence of events that are making this literally the best seller's market I've seen. It is the season of the seller. So there you have it. There is some top overview data from our 2020 industry report. Now we just released it. By the time that the, you, you're watching this video, you can actually go and download our 2021 industry report and get all the data I just mentioned. We, it's super long. It took me forever to write, but it is close to 40,000 words of me analyzing literally hundreds of businesses sold on our marketplace to help you get more insights into the trends of what's happening in the industry and understand where opportunity exists, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Because like I said, there are opportunities for buyers still, even with these high valuations. And if you're a seller, it, it's pretty clear what the opportunity is. If you ever wanted to sell your business or you're getting close to sell your business, you could not ask for a better time to sell than right now. So if you want that report, go ahead, click the link down below in the description. It'll take you to a capture page and you can go download the report from there. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified whenever I do do these videos. Past videos, I always say, oh, I do one video a week. But as you all know, my loyal fans, that is not true because I get distracted writing gigantic reports. <laughs> that has not happened, unfortunately. But hopefully we'll be able to come back on here with more videos and more content for you in the M&A online business space. Also, by the way, if you, another reason to subscribe to this YouTube channel is I will be going a deep dive into the state of the Amazon FBA industry as well as it relates to M&A with mergers and acquisitions. So stay tuned to all of that. Hopefully all those videos will be coming out shortly after this one. And again, if you want to download the report, you can go and click the link down below and get your copy for free. Talk to you soon.